everybody! This is a compound gearbox that we made in video 2009 and inside of there are stacked planetary gear systems. Now a planetary gear system looks like this. It's essentially three elements arranged like this, sun, planets and ring. The large central gear is the sun gear and it's surrounded by smaller gears called the planet gears and themselves are around by a much larger gear that's in the shape of the ring and it's called the ring gear. The planet gears are all held together by a carrier called the planet carrier. The way it works is you hold one section stationary and move the other two in relation to each other. So here we're holding the sun gear stationary and the planet gear is being turned to turn the external ring gear. We can equally hold the ring gear stationary and rotate the sun, which rotates the planets and the output is through the planet carrier. Or we can hold the planets still and move the ring in relation to the sun. So this gives us a very compact unit with an easy to select set of ratios, which is why you see them used in transmissions all the time. You'll also see them used in drills, for example, as well as many other places. And the way you work out the gear ratios is just like any other gear, it's the ratio of the teeth. So the ratio of the sun gear to the ring gear teeth gives you that gear ratio. If you want to know the ratio of the planets, what you do is add the sun and the ring together, and that's the, called the effective teeth of the planet carrier and they again would just be the ratios of the teeth. Now because of that of course if you have an output gear where you're using the sun and the planets that's always going to be the highest gear which is why you see that in things like drills they're fixed and the common thing to do is hold one part still and move the other two parts. But it does beg the question, what about if you moved all three parts in relation to each other? So what I've done is I've taken the ring gear and instead of just having the ring teeth on the inside, I've also added them on the outside and the lala will allow us to drive the ring independently of the other gears so we can rotate all three at the same time. And what that'll mean is that we'll have two input gears and one output gear. So the input will be the sum of the two input gears and we should be able to dramatically alter that gear ratio. So what I've done is I prepared this in Tinkercad, which is a whole other gear set. So we've got our sun and planet gears right here. There's the planet with the planet carriers. That actually is the output. So it'll go onto there like that to create my output drive. The input drive of the sun is this one, which will go in the center like that to create a sun and planet arrangement. And then of course we put our ring gear onto the outside like that. And we have our planet gear system, but we're able to drive it from the external as well. So let's put that together. And to put that together, what we need to do is put some bearings in there. They're skater bearings. So they're uh, 22 mil by 7 mil by 8 mil. And in the sun, we've got an 8 mil hole. So we put a bar in there that juts out just big enough to go into there so it makes one unit. And of course we want that to spin freely because the spinning of this needs to be independent of that. And so we put a washer between them. Let's do that. So there it is with its bearings, we've got the bar in there, we pop a washer on there, that then fits in there and so the sun can now turn independently of the planet carrier. The planet carrier is here, we put the planet gears on and then that fits, says he, there we go, that fits on there. like that, and the sun goes in there. There we go. <laughs> and then we put the ring on. And there it is in its cradle. Now it operates just like any planet gear. So if I turn the sun and hold the ring, the output is on the planets, which is right there, and you can see it turning slowly, but with lots of torque. Equally, if I hold the planets and turn the sun, the ring gear will turn. Or if I hold the sun and turn the ring gear, again, the planets will turn. So it operates just like any other planetary gearbox. But something really interesting happens if I rotate this at the same time that I rotate the sun. To look at that, I've printed this, which is a drive gear. If I put it in this other cradle here, 
Then we can intermesh the drive gear with the ring gear by lining them up like that. Okay, so I just butted these up against each other. Now if I hold that gear and turn this, then we can see that that gear is not turning and so it's operating like a planetary gear. But if I keep turning that at a constant rate and I'm turning this clockwise, and I turn that gear, this gear, anti-clockwise, you can see that we slow down the flag. And the rate at which we slow down the flag is equal to the rate at which this spins. And so what we've got is an infinitely variable transmission. Now if I rotate it clockwise and rotate that clockwise, what we get is an increase in speed. And so we've got an extra gear that we can control externally. Now if we attach a motor to that gear and change the speed of the motor with a variable resistor, we can use that changing speed to control the output of the planetary gear system. What we've got now is an electronically controlled continuously variable transmission. If we speed that up far enough, we can even put this into reverse. Now I saw that, I thought it was absolutely brilliant. I mean it's obvious that it can be used in a car as a CVT. but if we use that in a wind turbine, there must be huge benefits to be had because, of course, the wind turbine inputs in the sun. The output to the generator is here on the planets. And as the wind blows more strongly, of course, everything turns that much more quickly. And that's when you get a danger of blowing up your generator. But if we had a system where we could slow down the output, even though the input was increasing, of course, what we'd get is a much broader range of wind speeds in which we could operate our wind turbine. And that would mean they would generate more energy per wind turbine. And I thought that was super cool. Now, of course, we're taking sense data of wind speed and controlling it electronically by changing the motor speed. And I thought that would work really well. But would it be possible to connect the input to this as a feedback mechanism that would control itself. So, I went and made an idle gear. These three bits are for an idle gear. All we do is print them off, pop that in there and put that on there. A bit of glue and we have an idle gear. So there's my idle gear in place right there. Now the gear teeth are all the same. So this is 50 teeth, 50 teeth, 50 teeth. So all that gear does is make sure that that turns in the opposite direction to that. And of course we need that in order to slow it down. Because if we turned it in the same direction, then the two would add together and speed it up. And incidentally, in the file, I've printed this. So if you put that onto the sun gear here, that will engage with that drive gear. And what you'll get is double the speed out of here. But I'm interested in wind turbines. So I've put my idle gear in there. So if I turn this clockwise, this will turn anti-clockwise, making that turn clockwise, which is exactly what we want. So now we need to see if it'll actually work. So if I spin that slowly, you'll see the flag going round. If I spin it quickly, <laughs> more or less, the output stays the same. Of course, I just guessed at these gear ratios. You'd need to do a bit more optimization to get the correct gear ratio. But it seems that that actually works really well, that this forms a feedback mechanism. So the faster the blades spin, it spins this faster, which spins this, creating a mechanism that slows down the output. So the output remains relatively constant. I thought that was brilliant, which is why I didn't put it together with the motor demonstration. I wanted to put it together with the idler in place demonstration. So you can see that the increasing the speed of the wind turbine blades does not increase the speed significantly of the output. And of course, the effect of that is that the wind turbine is going to be able to operate in a much broader range of wind speeds without putting the generator into peril. So anyway, I thought I would share that with you. Of course, all of these files are on Thingiverse, uh, should you want them. And if you want to play around with those gear ratios, then please feel free and keep me in touch with what you're doing. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. And please do remember to like and subscribe. No, if you don't like that, stick a motor on there. Anyway, thanks again.